This is Twit. This the big story this week was Chat GPT 5.0, and uh, on uh, I guess was it Tuesday or Wednesday, or no, it's Thursday. I guess uh, we we streamed uh, the uh, very awkward Sam Altman and uh, and his team announcing it, showing by the way two uh, graphs of its performance that were nonsensical. <laughs> Which apparently, I, I hope they didn't use ChatGPT5 to design. Um, kind of That's kind of embarrassing. And then it launched, and he said, everybody's going to have it. In fact, you're going to be able to use it even if you're on a free tier. And the complaints that started flowing in, I can't see it. I, can't, uh, I think it's just taken a while to roll out. I got it right away. Played with it quite a bit, too. I, uh, I'm kind of impressed. But there there is a broad swath a broad range of opinions over chat gpt what do you what before i go to gary marcus what do you guys think of it opinions are like eyeballs everybody got two yeah they got yeah. The one that they share on social media and then the one that they it's keep good. for themselves i like it doc and it's funny i just came up with that i should write that down yeah because uh, you know please. i'm at an age where i forget that you no know, what happens is it is super fun to be just, hyper just to keep irritated in mind, you are wearing glasses so you're kind of yeah for us <laughs> okay <laughs> this is true um but it's, it's super fun to be hyper outraged on internet if everybody else is hyper outraged on internet but at the same time you're still using it the way you're using it. So it depends on what you're trying to do. I would say one, number two, know that when it first comes out, everybody and their mother is going back to try it. So you're going to get weird server issues and things like that. And the rollout is different from two years ago when we we're rolling it out to a handful of users. Now we're rolling it out to like half the population maybe. And so, yeah, it's a different game, bro. It has to scale. Like I get super, this is going to be, Leo, you'll understand this. And I swear I won't turn this show into sports ball because we will get mad. People are irritated at right now at hearing what player contracts are making. I'm like, take those numbers and use a inflation calculator and put it back to what Jerry Rice got paid when he got accepted. It ain't that different, bro. The numbers sound crazy now because that's where the economy is right now. So well, even like, more than that, what, even if it wasn't inflated uh, or it were inflated, these guys make that much money. NBA stars make that much money for their teams. The teams yes. wouldn't be paying it if they didn't if get they a reward, Thank a, you. a profit out of it. They're actually underpaid, so, by the way. This is Benito. They're actually underpaid. I so. think they're probably underpaid. Uh, absolutely. They are underpaid. And the only reason why people are mad is because you played. I'm going to say something mean. You played in high school. But you sucked. You didn't make it to college. You didn't make it to the pros. And now you're mad that somebody else is getting paid for the dream that you yeah, had. People you didn't work bad. like they did. <laughs> and a, a lot of a lot of pros retire in Hawaii, right? Yeah. I see Marshawn Lynch in Hawaii all the time. He has. You can't miss him. He's here, beast mode right? is big. Yes. Uh, I see Marcellus Wiley in Hawaii all the time. As a matter of fact, he uses part of our wish shot whenever he feels like working. Oh, on nice. Stuff. Oh, nice. That dude's body. He looks older than me body wise i mean oh, he fit, took a, he took a beating that's why he took a beating right you know these things happen so these guys are paying you, you know you get paid for what they get paid for what they do and so taking it back to tech when you release something like this the problem is these guys can if they don't go out and do the steve jobs on stage people talk spicy if they do the steve jobs on stage people says oh they lied or they overhyped it or they did whatever the shareholders need them to say one thing and the users want everything for nothing. So somebody got to give. <laughs> Something has to give. Like, let's be reality about this. Yeah, it's crazy. It, it's fun to read the subreddit chat GPT for a range of things. It's absolutely diabolical. I'm done with you forever. GPT thinking is worse than 03. I mean, up and down, over and out. Uh, one of the things... OpenAI did almost immediately is they killed all, at least in the ChatGPT app, they killed all the other choices. <laughs> uh, and there was such a hue and cry that they brought back 4.0. And they said, if people keep using it, we'll see. Um, yeah, you're right. That was weird because on the first day, all the choices were there. Yeah, and then on the second they day, they were all missing because I made like three videos right away. And I was like, wait, my video no longer right because you can't go back to the old models. Here's a well, uh, image made are, by 
chat GPT-5 of the difference between GPT-4, which is friendly and warm and candlelit and has a glass of wine, and GPT-5, which is you're in a boardroom with HR and doesn't look like it's going well. What? We were talking right before we started that they're low on hardware and servers, so they have to get rid of the old models to make room. Uh, makes sense. Yes, they needed the GPUs. The that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... <laughs> I, I'm I'm mostly impressed that they have delivered improved factuality. That's that's a great product feature to to tout uh, in their in their blog post. Yeah. I've been playing with it and I have had good results. I did notice it's quite a bit drier in its results. Um, I fed some information about a friend's medical uh, situation to it. Uh, that person asked me to do so, so I did, and it, it actually said something which I think is dangerous. Uh, it said that that person should discontinue a medication they're on immediately. And the person's doctor said, well, we'll, we'll talk in a month. So I'm going to trust the doctor, I think. Um, yeah. There's also this story, uh, which isn't ChatGPT5, but uh, it's still pretty hysterical about a young man who uh, changed his diet because uh, the uh, AI had told him not to do uh, salt sodium chloride but instead to do sodium bromide which is a, a psychoactive drug and it actually gave him a brain disease so maybe that is a, a reason not to trust it on the other hand i've and by the way this is one of the things uh open have pushed in fact they brought a cancer survivor on saying um I, this was, I got a very kind of terse email from my doctor and it, I got scared and I didn't know what to say. So we gave it to ChatGPT5 because we had an early version of it. And it was so helpful. It was so great. It gave me all the information I needed. And they're put, and Sam Altman saying, yes, we think this is going to change the world. This is, this is one of our missions. Well, it's maybe not so good if it tells you to eat sodium bromide instead of sodium chloride. It's really hard to bring dead people on and say <laughs> on stage how it, how it failed me <laughs> those people those don't, people don't uh, end up in the no. yeah i i've I, had I, issues I, with it using memory um it doesn't its memory usage is worse and for my experience that might be another where, thing because they had the resource issues you think yeah mm -hmm. it could be uh, but 40 definitely worked better but this is like you know the first iteration i think doc is right. saying like this this is going to change this is going to evolve they're they're taking all the feedback can I ask a, 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 a meta question here, which is sure. not, not meta the company, but uh, meta. I was going to say <laughs> a llama question, Explain, Owen. Uh, but uh, like, does it really matter if if chat GPT is better? You know, is it kind of like Google where it's just locked in as the, you know, perceived number one player and it's going to get more usage. It's going to get more data because it gets more usage and all of the technical stuff is just, all, you know, kind of playing on the margins. I think it's important for a couple of reasons. One, because Sam Altman hyped it to the sky, even at the beginning That's of his the, job. Of, uh, yeah, but people believed him. And in the beginning of the talk, he even said, it's kind of, you know, before having ChatGPT in your pocket was like having a smart high schooler. Now it's like having a smart PhD in your pocket. And he said, uh, your life will change when you have somebody smarter than you in your pocket. <laughs> Could make your pants really heavy. But, uh, I, I so the hype is part of it. I think also there was even this feeling among uh, accelerationists anyway, that this might be the breakthrough. This might be the one. This might be AGI. It's not, obviously. Yeah. Okay. So the problem with hype, let's, let's cover this because this happens a lot in tech. And there's, I, I'm, a, I'm a YouTuber, of course, right? I prefer a content creator, but I use the words you guys understand. Every time somebody drops something new, no matter what the industry, it could be a hard drive company, it could be a computer company, a soundboard company, microphone company, camera companies, especially. Everyone goes in and goes, oh, well, this product was overhyped. It doesn't match the hype or whatever. Now, you and I, Lee, are old school. We remember when releases were pretty much we learned everything all the same day at the same time. Now there's crazy levels of leakery. And then there's the idea that companies are leaking stuff on purpose. And then there's the ideas where they leak it to the people who are influencers so that they can tell. And then there's the idea where the influencers are getting paid, so they're lying. 
And there's like, well, the CEO lied because they said like all of the above are these people's jobs. And this is what they're supposed to do. You are an adult. Your job is to make adult decisions. So when some information is handed to you, it is up to you to decide what to do with it. I had teachers all throughout school who told me that I needed to be a priest and live a Catholic lifestyle. Guess what I don't do today? When I got old enough, I ran. Right. You have the ability to make decisions, but everybody wants to blame all these things on stuff instead of them taking responsibility and believing it. So, first of all, I need to receive receipts on the person that Chad told them to do sodium bromide. And number two, I went to high school. I know what sodium bromide is. I was high in in chemistry (laughs) class, but I remember (laughs) not to take that. You know what I mean? (laughs) <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? So, like, if you're an adult and you don't know what sodium bromide is, that's on you, dog. We all learned that mess in school. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all had to do the periodic table. So, at some point in time, that's kind of sort of on you, right? I think we are giving up too much of our self-responsibility and blaming everybody else for things that aren't going the way it is. And even AI people have always told us, at the bottom of every response, it says, I may get things wrong. Double check your answer. It legit says that on every freaking response. I, so, I am in alignment with you, Doc, for the most part, but we'll go over a story about Tesla and their liability. Based oh, on dear. Marketing. Yes. Yep. But <laughs> there, there is a line where you can't just announce that we are training it on health data to be better at health data and then Someone goes to their friend who's the tech guy and says, hey, could you tell me what it says? That's going to happen. There are too many things in the world for people to focus on every release for every product, especially if it's not in their domain. Uh, And so they just hear things and it might be true, maybe not. But well, there's a lot of that regardless of AIs out there. I mean, that's yeah, that happens. That's the world we live in now. Yes. But when you're raising money and you're you're not you're amplifying this and you're downplaying the risk and yes it says that at the bottom of every prompt but every website says can we store your cookies it, right people <laughs> ignore that yeah if they're if they think that they are and it's wild i agree and it's like people should have some personal responsibility it's just like think a little bit harder or but sometimes people are busy and they can't and and, and when you hear like there's an ai revolution when you hear that jobs are being d- displaced and people are losing work and being replaced with ai there, there is a narrative out there where people are putting too much faith in this because they are not giving equal parts measure of truthful with equal parts measure of hype. And I, that's the kind of world. I think the part true. of the problem is distinguishing what AI is good at because it's definitely good at some things, like really good. Like the, some it's of the good video. at some things, some of the time. Yeah, and and so it's we're not used to being discriminating we're not sure how to discriminate between the good stuff and the bad stuff that we get from this source right but normally like that is if, if i know somebody no yeah but if i know somebody who's a bser i'm on everything that person says is suspect and i'm gonna take it with a grain of salt on the other hand That's if i know why we're friends <laughs> <laughs> if i know somebody's really smart that that person's gonna when they say things i may not take everything on face value but i'm gonna give it a lot more credence in fact That's this was friends. the that's why we're friends. This is the warning <laughs> that uh, uh, going way back, Timney uh, Tim Get Jebru uh, and uh, um, Margaret Schmitchell and uh, Emily uh, Bender gave yeah. in their stochastic parrots paper is that you got to be, we got to be careful here because people are going to give it more credence because it came from a computer and there will be misinformation and disinformation that comes out of this machine. I got to say, in, in my opinion, we've kind of started to take AI for granted. If five years ago, I had said, here's a thing that's going to generate, I, you know, this JavaScript code that I wrote yesterday for my Obsidian that works and it's great. It's amazing. Here's a thing that's going to tell me whether my supplements are good and what's missing and what interactions I should worry about. Of course, I verified. But if you had told me it's going to do that based on the fact that it ingested a lot of content, turned it into tokens, and then is now basically using probability to decide what token follows which, mm. it doesn't, I don't get how it goes from spicy autocorrect to something that's actually 
useful. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how that, I don't think anybody understands why LLMs are so good at what they do. So yeah. I'm, I'm not going to take it for granted because I'm amazed. Yes, it's not perfect. Yes, there's all these problems. I'm still amazed at what it's doing. Now, there, I notice also that some of the criticism comes from people with a bent one way or the other. So let's. Yeah, with a bone to pick. Gary Marcus, who is a AI, we've had we've interviewed him on, on our AI show, Intelligent Machines. I like the guy; he's smart, but he's you know he's made a living debunking AI. Mm -hmm. His article almost immediately. This was August 9th, so the next day is GPT five overdue, overhyped, and underwhelming, and that's not the worst of it. Uh, he almost gloating that ChatGPT was so bad. <laughs> uh i wouldn't gloat about it and i don't think it's so bad yes admittedly it's not well it's certainly not agi and it's i i think maybe sam altman overhyped it for sure which was a mistake but it's but still and it's not just chat gpt it's it's uh chat gpt and anthropic claude and uh, you know, Kimmy, and there's a bunch of them, and they're doing amazing things. And I think that that's here's a. I, I gotta tell you something, which is super funny. So, Wizardling just put in the chat that drivers blindly follow GPS into rivers and off the side. Oh yeah, of the hill. I do that all the time. Well, we I have drive a, off we the have road. a space in Hawaii on the Big Island. <laughs> yeah, that I think Maps has fixed it since then. But in like two weeks time frame, three different tourists drove their car into the harbor. And then That's as a person terrible. who lives here and know what these boat ramps look like, I'm like, yo, stop blaming the GPS for that. I'm somebody who can't drive. There's no way you don't see the water coming and don't be like, let me stop. But one lady drove a minivan in and like a fisherman just happened to be emptying the boat. He had to get her kids out because she didn't even know how to, you know, break the glass or, you know, do any of the other things that you're taught in driver's ed. And so she literally was in peril. And it's funny because it's like, how do you drive into the ocean? Like, we don't have little secret creeks here. We do. But I mean, what they're driving into is the Pacific Ocean. And there's tons <laughs> of yachts next to Just it. Just open your eyes. So you like, might notice. <laughs> I'm like saying it wasn't like in some weird rural situation. Like when you see the, the SS Faulkner next to it, you don't drive in. I'm just, but people do it. So I get that. That, that I miss concept. I miss off ramps all the time. I I go play. You know, I have a little too uh, dependent on GPS, and I admit it. I used to, you know, get out the Thomas. What do they call it? The Thomas Guide. That book yeah, with maps in it. Well, oh. I thought we had um we had triple A maps. You know, my dad used to get the one that you can never yeah, fold back. The triptych. And it just becomes yeah. a crumble of paper because it was so obnoxious. Yeah. Uh, but I just, I, I, Sam is not one of my favorite people, but I ain't mad at him either. But just understand that Kyle Shanahan and Pete Carroll and 30 other coaches are telling everybody that their team is going to win the Super sure. Bowl this year because that's their freaking job. So you should not really listen to Sam. You have to take it with a block of salt because that is his job. You got so, to put your own feet. Well, a block of sodium chloride or sodium bromide? <laughs> I'm going with bromide in this particular case only because Sam is Sam. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from a much longer show we call This Week in Tech. If you want to see the whole thing, there's a link down below. And you know what the best thing to do would be? Like and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.